Now, you've been doing a good job. You just really need to get the work done that we're going, that we're doing. Today's poem This poem is called, A Bird Came Down the Walk. And guess who it's by? By Emily Dickinson, of course. She writes a lot of very simple poems about nature and such. This one's pretty easy. I'm going to read the poem to you first. I'll talk about some things that might, you might not understand. And then you're on your own. I think you'll be able to do it well. This is just, it's simply talking about the things that she says. A bird, a bird came down the walk. He did not know I saw. He bit an angle worm in halves and ate the fellow raw. And then he drank a dew from a convenient grass and then hopped sidewise, sidewise to the wall to, li to let a beetle pass. He glanced with rapid eyes that hurried all around. They looked like frightened beads, I thought. Oops. He stirred his velvet head. Like one in danger, cautious, I offered him a crumb, and he unrolled his feathers and rode him softer home. Then oars divide the ocean, too silver for a seam, or butterflies off banks of noon leap, splashless as they swim. Did you get some sense of meaning from that? Here we go. This is the very first thing. Here's a bird. A bird came down the walk. He bit an angleworm in halves and ate the fellow raw. Easy enough. And then he drank a dew from a convenient grass. As you can tell, dew is water. He took a drink of water and then he hopped sidewise to the wall to let a beetle pass. Instead of flying, this kind of bird is a robin and robins often hop on the ground. I'm sure that you've seen them. And here is a picture of a beetle. Of course, it's not quite this big and it's not a cockroach. This is a beetle from outside. That's all he's talking about. Then he glanced with rapid eyes that hurried all around. They looked like frightened beads, I thought. He stirred his velvet head. Now, these frightened beads, his eyes look like this. Beads are something that go on a necklace. If you put these together, they look kind of like a necklace, but it's talking about his eyes. His eyes are looking all around and they look like frightened beads. You know that birds are always looking around uh, trying to spot some danger. And then he stirred his velvet head. His head is just very soft. And the last part, one in danger, cautious, I offered him a crumb. He unrolled his feathers and rode him softly home. Now this is very easy. Here's a little crumb of bread that the poet is trying to give to the bird. But have you ever tried to feed a bird from your hand? All they do is unfurl their wings, which means spread their wings and fly. And here, instead of saying spread his wings and flies, it just says, and rode him softer home. Then oars divide the ocean to silver for a seam. In other words, is he flying in the ocean? No, he's flying in the sky, but the sky and the ocean are very similar. They go on for a long time. And here it just throws in butterflies. Butterflies fly in the sky too and are splashless as they swim. They're flying through the sky. They're not really swimming. Let's take a look at the questions. Uh, here is the, the poem for reference because we'll go back and forth with the poem and the questions. Question number one, you'll know the answer to, so I'm not going to talk about that one. This question two says, the rhyme, you, the poem uses rhyme in many places. What are two lines of the poem that, that rhyme? Are they two and four, one and three? 
In other words, you look at the lines. This is one, two, three, four. Which pair of sentences, which pair of lines rhyme? Does walk rhyme with saw? No. A rhyming word is that it sounds the same at the end. This has a k at the end. This has a, so they don't rhyme. How about one and three? Walk, halves. No. How about two and four? Saw, raw. Yes, these two rhyme. Notice how they have this, they are spelled the same too at the end. So your answer is going to be lines two and four. Now, question number three, lines nine through 13 of the poem. Read that. Based on this evidence, what could you conclude about the what the bird is feeling? Now go back to the poem. You're looking for lines nine through 13. Come on. Uh, now here's number, this is number 10. So this is nine, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. He glanced with rapid eyes that hurried all around. They look like frightened beads, I thought. He stirred his velvet head like one in danger, cautious. Now those, that's my evidence, frightened, danger, cautious. Let me see if I can find an answer that goes with how he's feeling. The bird feels nervous and scared. I have the evidence for that. Let me see this one. The bird feels proud and strong. No. Excited and happy. No. Bored and restless. No. You see, according to my evidence, nervous and scared would be my answer. This is question four. When in the poem does the bird most likely notice that the speaker is watching him? Let's go back and see. Now it's going to be lines nine and 10, seven to 18, one and two, seven, eight. Where is the, where does he begin to notice that the poet is watching him? It doesn't say anything down here. I'm thinking, let's see, this is 15. So 14, 13 and 14 and possibly up here. Let's see. Let's go back and look at those numbers. Well, where am I going? Let's see. I had nine and 10, 17 and 18. Let's go back and look at that. Nine and 10. Uh, he glanced with rapid eyes that hurried all around, possibly. Now this is 15, 16, 17. Then oars divide the ocean. No, the question asks you, when did he first suspect that someone was watching him? And I'm going to say that the answer is lines nine and 10. Ooh, a lot of A's right there. Now the main idea, what is this poem about? This is a very simple answer. A bird comes down the walk and then swims through a puddle of water. That is not the answer. When the bird swims, it's through the sky. A bird comes down the walk and eats crumbs out of the speaker's hand. Is that what the bird did? Actually eat the crumbs out of the speaker's hand? A bird comes down the walk, eats a worm, drinks a dew drop from some grass, now that's the closest one. However, it doesn't finish the poem. A bird comes down the walk, but flies away when the speaker offers him a crumb. That is the best answer. Did you see how it had all parts of it? Now read these lines from the poem. He stirred his velvet head like one in danger, cautious. I offered him a crumb. And he unrolled his feathers and rode him softer home. Then oars divide the ocean. What does the, what does the phrase 
rode him safer home mean? Chirped quietly? Hopped onto a boat? Flew away softly? Swam through a puddle? I hope you realize that letter C is the answer. Last one, I think. Read these lines from the poem. He glanced with rapid eyes, then hurried all around. They looked like frightened beads, I thought. Now, to whom or what does the they refer? What is they talking about? The speaker and the bird? The bird and his friends? The bird's wings? The bird's eyes? Now, to get the answer to this, you have to go back here. He glanced with rapid eyes. That hurried all around. What hurried all around? Eyes. They looked like frightened beads. What are they? You know the answer. His eyes. That's it. Now you're going to go back to Google Classroom, sign on to ReadWorks, and find this poem. It's assigned to you. And now you know the answers. Good luck, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.